Right. The next model that we need to deal with is the circular flow. Again, it is a simplification, but it does give us a place to start to understand things like the movement of money through an economy. And we're going to deal with that a lot this year. So for the circular flow, we want to start with two different sectors in the economy, or if you want to think of them as economic players, you can think of them that way. Firms, or you can just call them businesses if you prefer, it means the same thing. I like firms because it's shorter and it's easier to fit on the graph. And households. Why don't you use homes? Because they're called economic households. Yeah, but it would be shorter and easier to fit on the graph. Stop. All right. Okay. A household is an economic unit of at least one person that buys, or excuse me, that provides resources and buys goods and services. That's the definition of an economic household. So each person, by definition, is a member of a household. Now, for them to interact using the circular flow model, we have to add a couple of markets for them to use as the means to interact. So we're going to use the factor market. Factor market or the resources market, if you want to call it that. And the product market. Now, the factor market is where your factors of production are going to be bought and sold. By factors of production, we mean land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Now I'm going to abbreviate that one because it won't fit. Land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Land would be any natural resource. Labor is human work. If you have an animal that's doing something for you, that's not labor, that's land. Labor is human work, human effort. Capital is machines that are used in production. And entrepreneurship is the brain power to coordinate all the other resources to make a profit. In terms of payments for these resources, and again, this doesn't hold true in every real life situation, but the way most books explain it, the way you may see it on the test, is the payment for land is rent, labor is wages, capital is interest because most machines are expensive, they have to be financed. Okay, capital is interest, and for the entrepreneur it is profit. So those are the four resources that we're talking about being bought and sold in the factor market. Factors of production are your resources. Now, if the household is the economic unit that provides resources, then that's what they're putting into the factor market. So again, we can call those factors of production or we can call them resources. Those two terms are interchangeable. So that's our first arrow. Now, presumably they are not doing that for the fun of it. Gee, I just can't wait to go to work so I can starve. They provide resources in exchange for payment. The payments that they get, rent, wages, interest, and profit, we can classify as their income. So yes, it's money. Money that is earned by members of a household is income. So that's what we want to call it on this graph. So that's the exchange that's happening between households and firms through the factor market. They provide resources and they get paid. Now, where are these resources going? Firms or businesses buy the resources to make stuff that people want. So we have the resources coming through the factor market to the firms. Again, resources, factors of production, same thing. And in exchange for that, they are paying for them. Now, there are a couple of different terms we could use for this. Um, we can call them just resource payments. We can call them, if we want to get a little bit wordier, business 
expenditures. An expenditure just means an item that you're spending money on. That's all that means. So they're spending money, they get resources, the household is providing the resources and getting paid. That's the first part of this. Now, the firms take the resources and turn them into stuff. If they're making stuff that people don't want, then they're not going to make any money and presumably eventually they'll go out of business or they'll get smart enough to say, uh, do it, maybe we need to make something that people spend money on. So the firms are taking the resources, combining them and turning them into goods and services. Goods and services, in other words, products, things that people will buy. And they're not doing that because it's fun. They're not sitting around thinking, man, I can't wait to open a store at the mall so people can just walk in and take stuff and then I'll go out of business. You pay for it. So the money that they get for that, they provide goods and services. The money they get is their revenue. Don't just call it profit. Profit is not the same as revenue. Profit is what you have left over after you pay all your expenses. All right, so this is the next exchange here. They provide goods and services, and they get paid. And again, I'm talking about money, but there are different terms for it at different points because income goes to the household, revenue goes to the business. It doesn't mean exactly the same thing. Now, the last part here is that you, the consumer, go to the mall and... If you are the kind of person who likes to spend money, you know, somebody who's not me because I'm cheap, um, then maybe you find stuff at the mall that you absolutely can't live without. Woohoo! You know, so you buy some stuff. So the goods and services are purchased by members of households. Squeeze that in there. All right. And again, hopefully you're not walking off with them for free with your little five finger discount because that would put people out of business. So you are spending money. We can call that consumption. Again, using some big words. They're not that big. Consumption expenditures. I was agreeing with you on the not that big until you tacked on expenditures. Yeah, well, you know. All right, so that's money. Now, this is a lot easier to understand if you take it in pieces. So remember that each pair of arrows represents an exchange. You work, you get paid. You buy stuff, you spend money. The business sells you stuff, they make money, they buy resources and they pay for them. Each one of those is an exchange that happens through a market. A market is any place that something is bought and sold. If we're talking about the labor market, for example, that's not a place where people go down and buy workers. A lot of it happens, for example, online. If you're talking about like an online job search or resume service, that happens online. If you're talking about an online marketplace like eBay, eBay qualifies as a market because it is through eBay that products are bought and sold. So a market doesn't have to be like a physical location where you go to the grocery store. That is also a market, but there are lots of different ways that you can think about this. So each pair of arrows represents an exchange. Now what happens if we start breaking these links? And this is where it can get really interesting. We've got goods and services and resources going counterclockwise. We've got money going clockwise. And this, I think, is the easiest way to draw this. You know, you've got money on the outside going clockwise. 